A gentleman that I worked for many years ago, when I first got into the field, introduced me to static pressures as a measurement of system health. The company had a policy of you will not leave a system before you take the static pressures at the air handler and across a few major components. Over the years, this has proven true time and time again, and this is what this video is about. What is static pressure? That's the first question we need to talk about. Static pressure is the pressure within a hollow object, like a tire, balloon, or ductwork, pushing outwards or pulling inwards on the shell of an object. Static pressure is not the pressure of the air moving within an object. That would be velocity pressure. Air pressure is always a measurement of the pressure within an area with relationship to another area. For example, the pressure within a building is the relationship to the outdoor air pressure. The pressure in a supply duct is in relationship to the pressure in the space that the technician is taking the pressure in. So it's always a comparison of one area of pressure to another. Pressure scales, there are several three pressure scales we worry about in HVAC. And this is in the U.S., okay? Some disclaimer here. Metric countries have some other alternatives. So in the U.S., we use pounds per square inch, okay? And that could be pounds per square inch gauge pressure or pounds per square inch absolute pressure. The difference between the two is 14.7 PSI. Okay, we use this for refrigerant and water pressure. WC or inches of water columns. We're using for duct pressure, and even though it doesn't say it here, we also use it for drafts in chimneys. Pascals are very small pressure increments. They're mainly used in building pressures, like the air within it, the air movement within a building. But for this presentation, we're going to be worried about inches of water column. Okay. So we also have to take a look at the positive and negatives. And I'm talking positive and negatives of air pressure. From the system perspective, you're, you're at the blower in the air handler or furnace. Anything on the side of the blower that is blowing towards the conditioned space away from the air handler or furnace is called the supply. It has a higher pressure than the air surrounding the ductwork. Supply pressures are always positive numbers. Anything on the side of the blower that is being pour, pulled to, towards the blower is called the return. Return pressures always have a negative number. They have a lower pressure than the air surrounding the ductwork. And if you think about both of these, the supply being positive and the return being negative, it makes sense because we want to pull the air into a vacuum and we want to push the air out of the supply. So sort of makes sense. But again, remember these positive and negative numbers because it will change your readings. The total external static pressure of an HVAC system is the total absolute value of the supply and return pressures added together. Okay, by absolute value, we mean you drop the sign. Drop the minus and the positive and add them together. So a technician measures a static pressure of positive 0.05 inch water column in the supply plenum. The technician measures a static pressure of negative 0.046 inches in the return plenum. The total external static pressure of the system is 0.096 inches of water column. We are dropping the sign and we are adding it together. There's three major points of pressure change in any forced air system. We have a return air filter. We have a blower wheel. We have an evaporator coil. Additional points of pressure drop occur further down the ductwork system. And we're not going to go into those right now. That's another conversation. But they will affect things. So stay tuned on that. So when we talk about design conditions, it is when a system is installed, it's designed with a certain airflow, filter capacity, and evaporator in mind. Standard design airflow for most air conditioning systems is 400 CFM per ton. That, and a ton is 12,000 BTUs per hour of cooling capacity. So we have 400 CFM per ton. Capacity is based on the overall size of the building and the BTUs that must be removed to keep that building cool and dehumidified. 
The capacity determines the evaporator size and configuration. The capacity needed determines the airflow. The airflow requirements determine the size of the ductwork. The capacity determines the air handler size and the air handler size determines the maximum total external static pressure. Every air handler has a label on it, or did when it was shipped, that tells you what the maximum total external static pressure that that air handler, in other words the blower, can handle at peak efficiency. The evaporator has a pressure drop when it is wet and a second one when it's dry. Air moves more freely through a dry evaporator coil than the wet one. So if you're troubleshooting an air conditioning system, make sure that that coil has been running long enough to be wet. The filter has a pressure drop. The pressure drop of a filter will increase when it's dirty. Static pressure is affected by ductwork issues. When a system is at first installed, the total external static pressure should be at or below the air handler rated total external static pressure for the airflow required. If the supply duct begins to leak, the supply static pressure will drop and the total external static pressure will drop as well. If the supply duct is restricted, like a collapsed situation or too many registers closed, the supply static pressure will increase and the total external static pressure will increase. If the return ductwork is open or leaking, the return absolute value of the static pressure will decrease. And again, I'm saying absolute value just so we don't get into a positive and negative situation. If the return ductwork is blocked, the absolute value of the static pressure for the return will increase takes more, it's trying to pull a harder suction on it, so the number will go up. Blower motor amperages are affected as well, and that's why we have to know them. The amperage of the blower motor needs to be taken at the first visit, recorded, and compared to the nameplate. Blower motor amperages should be taken with the door to the compartment on. A lot of times we're tempted to just take the door off, take our blower motor amperage. It's not effective. It doesn't give you the correct running amperage of the blower. If you can't get into the wiring this way, the only place you can get an amperage reading is on the supply wiring to the unit. That's okay. Just do it the same way every time. Don't have anything else running. UV lights, electronic air filters, humidifiers that pulls current. The transformer inside the air handler will not make that much of a difference in your amperages. Air has weight. The more air moving across the blower motor, the harder the motor must work and the more amperage it will pull. The less air available, the easier it is for the motor to spin the blower wheel and the lower the amperage will be. To diagnose and check an air handler for proper operation on the air side, you must take supply plenum pressure, return plenum pressure, pressure on both sides of the evaporator coil, Try to do this with the system running in a wet coil. The pressure on both sides of the filter, if the filter's in the air handler. Okay, now for return filters in the ceiling or return grills, you may not be able to get a filter static pressure reading, okay? Just visually check and make sure those filters are clean and make sure the homeowner or building owner has not gone and put the high catch everything 3M $24 a piece filters into them because they are too restrictive. It's going to cause problems. So to evaluate a low static pressure, if the static pressure is lower than it's supposed to be, look for duct leakage in the supply and return ducts. Narrow it down by looking at the supply and return readings individually. Make sure all registers and grills in the conditioned spaces are not blocked. Look at the blower motor amperages and blower wheel cleanliness. Dirty blower wheels will decrease air movement, lower the total external, press, external static pressure, and it will lower the blower amperage. Again, if the blower wheel cannot pull air, it's going to lower the amperages because the blower has to work less. High static, static pressures is another diff problem. Greater than normal total external static pressures are a sign of restrictions. Look for restricted duct work on the supply or return side. 
evaluate each number separately to localize problems. Make sure all supply and return grills are open. If you are not the only one servicing this equipment, verify that nobody has increased blower mode speed settings or replaced the blower motor with an incorrect model. This happens occasionally. Pressure drop is another term we have to talk about. Every component in or surrounding the airstream in ductwork has a pressure drop associated with it. Pressure drop is the difference in air pressure before and after the component with the system operating normally. Coils, filters, heat strip, heat exchangers all have pressure drops as they come from the factory. The pressure drop will increase the dirtier they become. If pressure drop across air filter is greater than normal, look for dirty filters. If the pressure drop across a filter compartment is lower than normal, look for a missing filter or for a filter of lesser quality. This is a value add point for customers. You can show a customer a before and after and say, look, we fixed a restriction that is affecting the performance of your system. Pressure drop across an evaporator coil is very important as well. Okay, they do not improve or lessen on their own with age. The older it is, it doesn't get better. Okay, an increase of pressure drop across a coil means one thing, dirt. Clean the coil. A point of value add for your customer. This shows them the benefits of your service. If you come in to a preventative visit or a service call and do a pressure reading across a coil and it shows higher than normal pressure drop, you go clean that coil and then you show the customer that, hey, wait a sec, we cleaned this coil and we increased airflow by this much percent. There's a value add to your customer. They can see a result. By the way, pressure drops across evaporator coils and filters actually affect temperature difference. So if you're taking a temperature difference, it could be affected by the cleanliness of your evaporator coil and your filters. The more pressure drop, the slower the air will move. The longer it sits on a coil, your temperature split is going to increase. Velocity pressures is another pressure that we talk about. Velocity pressure is the pressure caused by air moving. Velocity pressure is measured by using a pitot tube. The pitot tube is a double wall tube with two connections. One gives you a static pressure reading, the other is for total pressure. The difference between the static pressure and the um, total pressure is your velocity pressure. Velocity pressure is strictly this, the pressure of the air moving in the ductwork, okay? But it cannot be included in the static, it cannot include static pressure. That's why we take out the static pressure from that reading. Velocity pressure is useful in determining airflow. To do this, take your total pressure and your static pressure readings. Measure and calculate the square feet of your ductwork, that's the internal area. If you measure it in inches, divide the total by 144 to get your square feet. Okay, square inches divided by 144 square feet. Use the formula here to calculate flow velocity. So V equals 4,005 times the square root of delta T or delta P. P is velocity pressure. In English, the formula V equals 4005 times square root delta P says exactly that. Flow velocity in feet per minute is equal to 4005 times the square root of the velocity pressure. Next, use the flow velocity in the formula airflow, which is Q in CFM, equals flow velocity in feet per minute times the duct cross-sectional area. You have all these numbers now. That gives you your actual airflow. It should match what your system requires. If it doesn't, you have a problem that's not refrigeration related. To put it all together, without taking static pressure readings, evaluating airflow, blower amperages, and velocity, you have no idea if the system is performing to specification. 
The reason this has become so important is over the years, manufacturers and experts in the field have found out that many systems are over and undercharged because technicians are skipping these measurements and not solving airflow issues prior to adjusting system charge. So the bottom line is don't guess, measure. 